So if white people just say to the black, y'all human, would you be satisfied? No, it takes more than that. It takes more than that. What else you want? For one thing, for one thing it, takes, it takes getting the knees off of our necks. Welcome to The Father State. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. The Father State is on Patreon. So click on the Patreon link in the description. I have with me Dr. Kenneth Waters. He is the Associate Dean at the School of Theology at Azusa Pacific University. He's also a professor in the Department of Biblical and Religious Studies. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Waters, for coming. Thank you for having me here. Um, how have you been dealing with the Chinese virus since all this stuff started? Yeah, well, I don't think it's proper to call it the Chinese virus. The Chinese are not responsible. Uh, a virus has no nationality. Uh, but we've been dealing with it by practicing what we've been told, social distancing, wearing our masks, practicing uh, self-isolation, washing our hands, you know, all the protocols issued by the CDC. Uh, we've been doing this uh, where I work and uh, so far, there has been no outbreak at all, unlike some other universities that have started much too soon uh, going back uh, to uh, campus. Uh, so we're thankful uh, for that, and we're determined to just continue to follow the guidelines, no matter how long it takes. I mean, patience is the key here. Yeah. We, all, we all yearn to get back to some semblance of, of normalcy, but yeah. we still need to practice patience just for the sake of keeping everyone safe and healthy. You don't like calling it, it, it is from China? It may have originated there, but of course, uh, it's been pointed it, out that- It definitely originated from China. But it, it's been pointed out that when, when the virus finally reached America, it actually came from Europe, from, from Europeans, not, not, not from, not from uh, the Chinese. Well, we're not absolutely sure about that because there were some Chinese people who came into the country, uh, three or four of them came in before it really would notice how bad it was. So it could have come from China as well, right? Well, I, th I think it's pretty well established where it, where it came from. It yeah. really came from, and it came, and it came by, by way of Europe. But, but still, the point, the still the point is, is that, is that a, virus, a virus could originate anywhere. It could break out anywhere. And, and the Chinese are no more responsible for the outbreak of this virus than any other people Yeah, we know they've been planet. told it made a lab, but if it's from China, why would it be, why is it not okay to say China, uh, uh, well, the there, Chinese uh, virus? Yeah, well, it's not it's, pointing to the people, it's pointing to where it came from. Well, that's, that's not the way it's taken. I, actually, to do that kind of fuels a, a kind of xenophobia that already exists in the United States, and that just plays into that, and also plays into some, some racist caricatures as, as well. Uh, so it's best to just call it what it is. It is the coronavirus disease 2019, or COVID-19 <laughs> uh, for short, and uh, we shouldn't try to attribute it. Or, uh, and actually what it is is blaming, blaming the Chinese people but they are, for the virus, the and they're not to blame not for fault, it. But the folks in the lab who made it are at fault. It did not originate in a lab. Well, there's a Chinese woman that was on Tucker, <laughs> no, no, Carson, no, no. and no, she it did, it did was not one of the scientists from there or something like that. She said it's from China. No, 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 no. It was no, made no, in no, a no. laboratory. No, it, 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 it regret regrettably, it originated in, in nature. Now, there, now, there's, now, there's been some theories that maybe it originated in, uh, in bats, bats biting animals, and then people consuming the animals. That kind of explains how the disease got from a bat to, to human beings. But this is a disease that did not originate in the laboratory. I know there are th conspiracy theories. There's a Chinese theories. woman who from China, and now they have arrested her mother because she's writing a paper about it, and she escaped from China to here recently, and she's saying that it is from a lab. Well, I'm afraid I cannot assign any credibility 
uh, to that. I, I think it's pretty well established how co corona, coronaviruses are not anything new. I mean, there's, there's always been coronaviruses. It's just now that this one got loose, got out of hand, and now we have a pandemic. And even the pandemic is not necessary. I mean, no. especially in the United States, if, if we had a presidential administration that was competent and ready to respond to this crisis, we wouldn't be in the situation uh, that we're in uh, now. But coronaviruses have a long history. We, we know where they come from. We know where they come Why from. Why would you rather believe it came from eating bats than to believe it came from a lab? Well, not eating, not, not eating bats. But, <laughs> Sucking the blood but of from, bats. But from bats biting animals. But don't they eat bats over there? I have no idea. Yeah, I, think I, I have no idea head. about by the diet. So. But would you rather believe it came from a bat or from the lab? You know, I I, I rather I rather believe it came came from anywhere. But we're not we're not dealing with belief. We're we're dealing with facts. I mean, facts are what's important here. So you have facts that it came from a bat rather than coming from a lab. Well, there's a history. I mean, it's just it's just it's just medical history. It's just uh, epi epidemiological history I know, but do about you where have, it came from. Do you have? Facts that it came from a bat, or do you have facts that came from a oh, bat? I mean, there are, there are medical facts. Now, now, of course, I didn't bring my volumes with me, but uh -huh. there, are, there are medical facts uh, that, that uh, this is an animal transmitted disease. It's usually transmitted from, from animals like bats to other animals. And then the question is, but how does it get to an, from an animal uh, to the human population? And, and, that, and, that, and that can happen. Uh, a variety of ways, and one of, one of the ways is just by consuming the animals that are that are uh, infected, like a cow. A cow. I mean, I mean, we, we eat cows in America, but a cow in America could just as easily have been infected by a bat and and passed on to us. You know, so I, I want to move on, but why would you rather believe it came from a bat than from the lab? It's if, not what it's 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 not that I rather believe that. Uh, I rather believe the truth. <laughs> I rather believe the facts. But you don't have proof that it didn't come from the lab. But there is proof. Where's the what, proof? What, what I have, I mean, it's, there, there are... What kind of proof you have that it came from bats and not from the well, lab? Well, like, like I said, there's, there's a long medical history of where coronaviruses come from. Well, I know that. Come viruses from. come from all different kind of places. But in this particular case with the Chinese virus, why would you rather believe it came from a bat than from a lab? But why would, why would anyone rather believe that someone manufactured the disease in a lab uh, rather than what the facts indicate that it originates in nature? Because there are evil people out there and evil people do weird things. Sure, they are. that's right, that's right. But do they have the ability to manufacture a disease such as the coronavirus China they without, do. without they anyone do. knowing this? In China, they do. Well, the question is, how do you because know that? Because it's a communist country. But and now that this scientist has escaped, and she's telling you the real deal, she's writing papers on it, so we have more proof that it's from China in a lab. Well, I don't think you that's... You don't believe her? No, I don't believe that. That's, that's, but that's she is a proof. Chinese lady. How are you going to doubt a Chinese lady? I very easily, just, uh -huh. just like I, just like I would doubt an Australian lady, <laughs> or an, or an African American lady, <laughs> or a, or a European lady, or any other person That's uh, who manufactures but then why a would conspiracy. They take her mother conspiracy. And why would right. they capture her mother when she left a, that country because of a communist country, right? Mm -hmm. And they were, they didn't like the fact she was rebuilding this, so they now imprison her mother. If there's nothing to hide, why would they imprison her mother? Well, that's, that's a good question. If they imprisoned her mother, did they imprison her for the reasons that, that, you're, that you're stating? Because she's trying to expose a uh, conspiracy concerning co the uh, coronavirus. Right. And like I said, that story just goes against the history of the coronavirus and everything we know about the coronavirus. I don't think something like that can happen under the radar, uh, given our uh, apparatus of national security and and uh, and and intelligence and and that 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 type well, of thing, I, would, I just I, would, I, would, I just don't think that can get by I, anyone. I can see how it can because our government is so political now, mm -hmm. and especially with the Democrats, they just want to control us, and they'll let anything go just to put fear in the people to control them. Yes. And plus, they seem to be in bed with China. They love China more than they love America. You know, what's, what's interesting to me is that 
is that even this presidential administration we're in now, given their propensity for cons conspiracy theories, yet we haven't heard that one from this administration. Heard what? 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 That uh, the coronavirus was manufactured uh, in a lab and That's, used, it, it, used as a weapon. The argument has been between the lab and eating bats and or roaches or something. But let me ask, are you disappointed that the president, when he first heard about it way back then, when they discovered that it existed with these Chinese people coming here, he stopped travel from uh, China, and the Democrats at the time were saying, oh, no, there's no problem. They were calling him xenophobic or something for stopping it in the travel. Uh -huh. Nancy Pelosi downtown uh, San Francisco, I guess, dancing with the Chinamans. Come on out, let's dance. Let's have fun. Ain't no big deal. <laughs> the okay. Democrat was telling no big deal. And now the thing is, is an outbreak. And they're trying to blame the president when they call him names when he tried to do something about it way back then. Are you, like, disappointed in the Democrats for being so crooked? Well, no. The, I mean, the, 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 the facts are is, is that the, the president did not impose a complete ban on uh, travel from, in China, from China. Yes, no, 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 he didn't. He he only imposed a partial a partial but ban. But even with that, upon the Democrats Chinese were like calling him. The, oh, you hate the Chinese. You are xenophobic. You are this and that. Well, they no, were calling him names. No, they, well, and they, now they, that the virus is out, they, they, they want to blame him. No, they're saying oh, that. They're saying that about him because he uses terms like the Chinese virus or the Kung flu. Which, which, is just, which is just simply racist. How is that racist? It's racist. It's racist against racist. Asian people. What? And, they did, and like I said, they are not responsible for a phenomenon of nature. Well, he know that. That it's could have happened that just as easily in some other country. But what if it happened in this country? What are we going to call it? The American Ameri virus. The American virus. If somebody go to the lab in America, create a virus like this, and it got out. It's American, but virus. it wasn't created in a lab. It was. It's, it, it originated in nature. But you don't know that for sure. I'm. I'm. I'm more sure that it originated in nature than it originated in a lab. Amazing. Yes. Isn't that like amazing? What's amazing? <laughs> that that I that I that I that I'm more sure yeah. that it originated in nature. Two things yes. amazing about and, it. And, and, you and don't see, want to call it a Chinese virus, and you are totally believe it. Was, Originated from a bat when it's not pure yet. No, no, no. I didn't say it originated from a bat because a bat had to get it from somewhere also. Right. But it originates. It originates in nature. It originates in nature. We have, a, like I said, coronavirus. This is nothing new. The coronavirus is not a brand new virus. Well, I know that. We've known kind of about virus, coronavirus, yeah. and we've always known where they Do come you trust from. The but Chinese we, but we've never, we've never given any coronavirus that existed before a, na a racist name. Like, like Chinese virus or any other nationality. So if you saw a Chinese person and you said, oh, that's a Chinese person, is that racist? If, if, I, if, if I recognize their nationality? Yeah. No, that is not racist. Why not? But if I blame them for something on the basis of their race or if I disparage them on the basis of their race, that is racist. That's amazing. It is. So you are an ordained... Oh, do you trust the Ch government of Chinese, of China? To do what? Do you trust them at all? I have, I have no trust or distrust for the Chinese, because I'm, I'm not a Chinese it's citizen. A it's, a, it's, a it's a communist government. It's a communist government. So do you trust the it's government of government. China? But, but I cannot distrust them. What, 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 I, what would be my basis for distrusting They're them? They're a communist country controlled by the government. Which means what? Why that, would I mean, you, does, does, right. that, does that mean does that does that mean you shouldn't trust them? That uh, okay. Let me, let me ask you this: Should they trust us? Yes. Why trust us to do what? Because we're open country. We're not well. So far, they're taking it away from us. But they can trust. We should. We can trust America, but we can't trust China. It's a communist country, right? Okay, but but now we're not talking in a vacuum here. We're talking about trusting them for what? To for do, anything. To do, to do to do what? To be honest to let the truth get out about what they're doing, to trust their media, okay. to trust anything about China. In the, in, the, in, the, in the area of politics, do you trust them though? in the area of politics, you cannot trust anyone, but do you trust including China? America. How about China? Do you trust China government? I neither trust them nor distrust them. Okay. So you are an ordained minister uh, in the uh, Missionary Baptist Church. Yeah. You are, uh, 
Were you called by God? Yes. And uh, you have uh, been a pastor in, in the uh, Methodist Church for 28 years. Yeah. How do you know you were called by God? Well, first, first of all, everyone's calling is, is different. Right. It's, it's different. Uh, but people perceive that they're called uh, by God, uh, first of all, when they, in some sense, hear God's voice. Now, now we're speaking of God here, so, so we cannot define God's voice. Is it audible? Is it inaudible? Uh, is it direct? Is it indirect? I mean, that's beyond us. Right. But people who perceive that they're called by God uh, to enter a ministry of preaching God's word somehow discern God's voice so in their heart. So how do you hearts. know you would call you know, you know you're called, uh, first of all, again, when you hear the voice, when you hear the voice. You heard God's and, and, voice? Yes, yes. And right. how old were you? How old was I? I was about 18. You were 18? Yeah. And so you're walking down the road, and God said, Kenneth, right? Well, he didn't really call my name, and I wasn't really walking. <laughs> I wasn't really walking down the road. I was, I was, I was, actually, I was actually inside of my house you were, when, when I perceived but I've seen God's call. Were you having dinner? Were you on pot? Or what happened? No, no, I don't do drugs. I, was, I wasn't high or anything. You never smoked pot? No, no. So, no. so you're in the house. What are you doing in the house? When he called you? Uh, you know, it's, it, was so, it was so long ago. Uh, oh. Actually, I, I think that I was reading my Bible when I was reading my Bible. And then, when I heard so God's you're voice. sitting there reading the Word, and then what happened? Uh, I felt God's call. I heard God's call and to, to, to in enter, your head, enter the ministry. Yeah. You heard the car in your head. In my head, in my heart, in my soul. What do you yeah. say? What do you yeah. say? Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, preach the word. He said, hey, as Kenny, simple, go preach simple. the word. Yes. Amazing. And did you That's jump up? What, what, what did you think in that moment when that happened? Well, no, I, 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 I had to process it. I had to process uh, the call. But, but you ask me, how, how does one know their call? And, and the, thing, the thing about calling is, is you receive it, and then, then God confirms it. God, God always confirms what, what he does. Oh, okay. and, he, and, he, and he does it. And again, it's different from everybody, I, I, different people again, but, but he confirms in, in different ways. He opens doors for you. He, he makes pathways uh, for you. He so sends day, people into so your that life. Day you were 18 that years old. He yes. called you at the table. You read the Bible. He called you. Yeah. And then how did he confirm it later? He confirmed it uh, just simply by the way he directed and guided uh, my life in the years that followed opportunities that he opened up uh, for me, which had direct bearing upon my opportunity uh, to exercise my call. And of course, it's also an educational uh, process. You continue to pray, you continue to read your word, and that way you become even more and more sensitive uh, to God's voice, and then were God does things for you. Were you surprised He called you? No, I wasn't surprised. I oh, wasn't surprised because I, I've been, I've been. Uh, God prepares you. That's, I mean, that's that's the other end of it. God prepares you uh, for the, for the call. Uh, so so it comes as no surprise if if you are welcoming it. Now now it is true that there's some people. Uh, who will try to evade, <laughs> evade the call, uh, but it always catches up uh, to them one way or another. But if you're open to the call and if you're preparing for the call, no, it doesn't come as a surprise. Did you go and tell your mother, oh, God just called me? No, I didn't. I, didn't. I think the first person I shared that with was my pastor. Oh, you were? Yeah. Why not your mother? Well, she wasn't, she wasn't there. She, oh, was, she, was, she wasn't there. Where was she? And um, she, she was uh, somewhere. She, I mean, she was, you she, remember I mean, with her, but she just wasn't I, I was home just, there. Yeah, there. she wasn't in the house oh. at, the, at, at the time. Eventually, eventually, yes, I did, I did speak to her. Why but, didn't you but, tell your But in the case of my mother, she saw it coming anyway. So she, always she wasn't surprised either. Yeah. Yes. Why didn't you tell your father? I did tell him. I did tell him. Uh, I didn't tell him immediately because, because again, uh, he wasn't he wasn't there at the time. Oh, at the time. Were you raised by both parents? Yes, I was raised oh, by okay. both my parents. Yeah. And so, um, were you a Christian at the time that he called you? Yes. And do you sin? Yes. You still sin? Yes. Even today, you sin. Yes. What type of sins you do? Well, that's personal. That's personal because I'm struggling. 
uh, against my sins, but, but my struggling? sins are the same as, as everyone else. I have to struggle against being selfish. I have to struggle against being doubtful. I got to struggle against being afraid. You know, it's a, it's a constant. I mean, anyone who says that just because they've had this experience of, of, of God's grace and forgiveness, that they're no longer a sinner uh, anymore, that person is just yanking your chain. I mean, it's just, it's just not true. And salvation, why do you say it's not true? Because salvation, salvation is a process. Salvation is a process. We are, we are pressing toward perfection. No one is there yet, but we are pressing toward it. The, the, the technical term for this is, is sanctification. We, we are all in this process of sanctification when we're becoming more and more. What does sanctification more, mean? It means to be purified, to be purified. So to you're be, being purified by God? By God, yes. Meaning that you're overcoming your sins? You overcome your sins. Eventually you, you won't sin? Eventually you won't sin. Are you not sin on earth or do you have to wait until you get to heaven? Well, there might be a point where you are further away from sin than you've ever been in your life. And at that point, uh, you can say that you're no longer a sinner. But the point is, it's a lifelong process. So it's right now you're process. struggling with fear and thoughts yeah, and sure. doubt. Yeah. So We call them weaknesses of the flesh. <laughs> so what were you saved from then once you were born of God, if you still have the same problems? We're all saved from the state of separation, the separation between us and God. You see, there, there's, there are two senses. So what's the purpose of coming to God if you're still going to be serving Satan? No, the purpose, you, the reason you come to God is to defeat the power of Satan but you still, in your life. You still, but you have not defeated the power of Satan because you're still sinning, right? No, you have defeated, when you're in the process of overcoming sin, that is the defeat of sin. But in the process of overcoming sin, you're no longer enslaved by sin. It doesn't mean that sin has left and that is that is gone gone anywhere. Did you but you're make no longer this up or is that in the Bible? Does, does God say you can sin and be saved? No. Just God, so how how no, you come up that's, with that? That's how God says. What does he say about God, being born again and then sinning? What does he say about that? You are saved when you're in the process of sanctification. First, first there's does justification. That, that's, that's in the Bible. That's does the Bible. God say that? That's, yes, that's in the what Bible. What does God say about being saved and sinning? He, once you're born again, what does he say about sin and being born again? You're in the process of overcoming sin. That what he said? Just, just, because, just because you are born again doesn't mean that you are suddenly sinless. You still have to struggle does against God say sin. That? That's in the Bible. You said that? Yeah, yeah Paul, Paul's letters. Paul's letters. Paul talks about we are justified by faith but John, apart from works. But and then Paul talks about the process of sanctification by which we are growing toward perfection. So amazing. it is a pilgrimage. It's a journey. So what, what, uh, what do you think about what John said about it? He said if a man sin and says that he's been born of God, he's a liar and the truth ain't in him. For this reason Christ came that you might not sin because sin is of your father the devil. That's true. So yeah. you're of your father the devil. No, I'm of, I'm of my father God. Not if you're sinning. But I'm not sinning. But you say you're sinning. No, no, I, I said, I said I'm you still You said a, you were sinning. I said I'm still a sinner. That, that because does not, you're still sinning. I'm still, I'm, still a, I'm still a sinner. Because, uh, because you're still sinning. No, I'm, I'm a sinner, not because I'm still sinning. I'm a sinner uh, because I am in a state of separation from God, so you have been born be of God then if you still separated from end. Him. You have not been born of God if you still separated from Him. I'm born of God if I'm being sanctified. I'm being sanctified daily, oh, which amazing. which means which means that God breaks the power of sin in my life. So do you do so you, you do you really sin. believe that you just once you come to God that you are now perfectly sinless? One hundred percent. You're one hundred percent sinless. Yes. You don't sin. You can't be sinning if you're of a, a nature that is not of sin. There is no sin in God's nature. There's only sin in Satan's nature. So you're born of the flesh, which is of your mother, 
And then when you become of age, you're born of the spirit, which is of the father that's in you. You cannot be yielded to sin. You cannot be controlled no, by sin. No, he said you can't sin be, at all. And be, and be saved. No, but I want to move on because of time. Yeah, I'm okay. going to let you go on sinning. <laughs> what a mess. No, I'm not, I'm not sinning. I'm being you sanctified. Know, you, do you sin? I'm being sanctified, but, you uh, said but, you but, sin. but still, but still, that doesn't mean that I'm perfectly sinless. I won't be perfectly sinless until the Lord calls what me home. What is sin? Sin is a state of separation from God. What does that and there, mean? And there are two. There are two. So I you're mean, not there, one with God sin, yet. There's sin. No, no. Uh, by grace, you're still separated from God. No, I'm reconciled to God. But then, how are you sinning then? Uh, because I'm still human. What? the? Uh, but I gotta ask you some more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> so you do you believe human beings are in a fallen state? I'm sorry? Do you believe human beings, people, yes. are in a fallen, F-A-L-L-N, the show is called a fallen state? Yeah. Do you mean human beings are in a fallen state? Yes, human beings are in a fallen state, but we have to understand that fallenness is not an individual human thing. It's a cosmic thing. All of creation is in a fallen state. I mean, that's, So you're still in a fallen state? All of creation is How in about a fallen you? state. I, I, I'm, I'm part of creation. So you're yes. still in a fallen state. Yes. Amazing. Yes, you are too. No. <laughs> yes, no, no, no. Yeah. We all have that, This is Romans chapter 8. Romans, Do the you whole, have the, anger? The whole of creation is yearning. I was born in a fallen state, but meaning that, you know, once I was born in sin, my family was, you know, born in sin. But once you confess your sin and forgive, you overcome it. You, you overcome it. Uh, but, but you're but no you're, longer a sinner. But, but you're still falling. I mean, you're still falling. I mean, the proof of that is did you're you going to die. Did you have to go to school to be a preacher? Huh? Did you have to go to Did you go to school to be a preacher? I did. Yes. Why did you go to school if God called you? I, I went. I went to school so I can to learn to do as Paul said, rightly divide the the word but of when truth. God, when with God, the Holy Spirit inside of you, when that divide the word for you. Uh, no, it takes it takes more than that. It, it takes, takes more, more than the Holy take, Spirit. It takes no the Holy Spirit. It takes the Holy Spirit. But, but, the, why but what the Holy Spirit does is train you, and teach you, and instruct you. And the Holy Spirit uses human agencies to do that. And that's why we go it to does. seminary. Yes. Amazing. I got to ask you this. So you're a theology, uh, of uh, and a history. I mean, I'm sorry. Your theology. And a universal teaching. I want to ask you about that. Yeah, I'm a theologian. I'm a theologian. Right. Yeah, I'm a theologian. So you have a PhD in theology? Uh, uh, yes. You also have an associate dean at uh, Azusa Pacific University? I'm associate dean, yes. You smart. Uh, well, no wonder you still sinning. Well, no. <laughs> I, 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 am, I am saved and sanctified, and, uh, and, and, but still... I and have enough wisdom to know that I'm not perfect yet. You, that's, that's why Paul said, forgetting what lies behind, I press forward to what lies ahead. I am pressing toward the mark of the upward call of God in Jesus Christ. Now, why would, why would Paul still be pressing toward the mark? I mean, here is somebody who saw Jesus himself on the Damascus Road. So why would he say to the Philippians that I'm still pressing toward the mark? And so to you, that meant that once he realized of himself, he couldn't do anything about it. It, it was the spirit that's inside of him. Does that mean to you that he stayed a sinner? Yes, well, you know, let, let me abandon that because you're hung up on staying a sinner. He's pressing toward perfection. But if you're pressing but, toward perfection, that means you're overcoming something. What are you overcoming? You're overcoming the flesh. See, there, 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 there are three things we have to struggle with. Sin, the flesh, and the devil. These three, these three malevolent forces but you sound that like, we struggle you against. You sound as though you believe the flesh has a, a, a life of its own, and it making you do something that you wouldn't ordinarily do and preventing you to do what you would do. You don't seem to realize it's a spirit that made a home in the flesh that causes you to do what you don't want to do. No, I agree with that. I agree with that. But a, you add like it's part, the flesh, part, though, because you said the flesh and this and that. If the flesh doesn't have a life of its own. 
No, it doesn't. But, but if you act like you think it does. If you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, you're still in the flesh, though. That, that's what, that's what, that's, I mean. That's why you this, must this be this born again to Roman, overcome the flesh. Romans chapter 7. The, the good I would do, I don't do. The evil I don't want to do, But that's do, why you I must do. be born He is again. struggling against the flesh. But that's why you have to be born of the but Spirit. Paul was, born, Paul was born again. He was born of the Spirit. And once he was born of the Spirit, he no longer sinned. But he's still struggling against the flesh. Amazing. I got to ask, <laughs> what does an associate dean do? Uh, as associate dean, I, I manage uh, the work of about 100 uh, faculty at, at Azusa Pacific uh, University and, and the education needs of about 5,000 uh, students. I just I make sure that they get the courses that they need. I make sure that they have teachers. And, uh, and I make sure that those teachers get paid. <laughs> Okay. I mean, I mean, that's, I got that's you. what Associate Dean does. Uh, the homosexuals are taking over uh, Azusa, right? Not, no, not Azusa Pacific University. Azusa Pacific University, uh, we, we believe that marriage is between a man and, and a woman. Uh, we do not believe that homosexuality is an alternative form of, of wholeness. Yeah. Uh, we're one of the few schools, uh, I, I guess, that, that, uh, that believe that, but we're very clear about where we stand on human sexuality. Do you support abortion? Personally, no. Do you think that it's wrong? I think, I think abortion is always the taking of a human life. Yeah. Now, it may not always be murder, but it is always the taking of a human life. Why well, might not always be murder? Uh, you know, it could, it could be uh, as, as a result of... Uh, Protecting, protecting the, the woman's life in some situations. Oh, so in some if, a woman, if a woman going to lose thing. her life, it's best to let the baby. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, say, I'm not saying that, but all I'm saying is, is that it's different, it's different from, from, yeah. from murder. Um, at uh, APU, students are supposed to learn the meaning of Christ. Yeah. What is the meaning of Christ? The meaning of Christ is that he is our savior and that he uh, promises to walk with us and work his work of redemption in our lives so that we might go forth and be instruments of salvation for others. Okay. Do you have anger? Yes. You have anger? Yes, especially during this political season. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and did you know that any man that has anger is a woman? What? <laughs> what? 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 This is this is this is strange doctrine, brother. I mean, but did you know that any man that has anger no, is a woman? No, I think I think men are very capable of being uh, angry uh, on their own, and they cannot blame women Why for, not? for being for being angry. But but they get their anger from their mothers, and when they become angry, they become like the mother, emotional. I, last I <laughs> heard, it takes both a man and a woman to. To, to create a child. So uh, he, they could just as easily get their temperament from, a, from their father. If, the if their, their father is angry, right, he's like a woman too, right? No, no there's, nothing, there's nothing feminine or, or gender restrictive about, about anger. Anger is just an emotion. Anger does not have a gender. But it's evil. Anger could be evil, but it is evil. But, but, but anger, I know anger is as an emotion. Actually, anger could be appropriate. At, at sometimes, no, as sometimes, long, as long as you don't allow it to control you. That's, that's why the Bible, you know. the Bible teaches us, get, be angry, but sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. So the Bible, the the Bible recognizes that anger is a problem, but is anger amazing. is not necessarily a sin unless you allow anger to consume you. Are you married? And, yes, I'm married. And you have children? Yes. So how do you deal with your angry wife if you're angry too? Well, my wife is not angry. <laughs> she doesn't get angry? Well, she gets angry at, at things. How yeah, do you I, deal I with do, her when too. you're angry? It's like a lesbian couple, right? Two women together. If you're gonna, how are you going to bring her out of her hell if you're angry? But what does that, what is, I mean, what does anger have to do with that? Because it's hell. There's no peace in anger. Well, that's, that's true, but, but anger is only bad when you allow yourself to be consumed by it. So how do you now, deal with it, your wife mind, though when, when, when she's Je angry? When Jesus cleansed the temple, the, was he not angry when he did that? No. When he went into the temple, no. cleaned out all the money changers? No. Well, you, don't call, you don't think that was anger? It was discernment. In discernment, there is no anger. And, and how, do, how do you separate 
that angry moment from discernment. By being born of God so you can overcome anger. That's why God said before you enter into the kingdom of heaven, you mustn't go and forgive. So you need to forgive your mother so you can overcome her identity. Are you married to a white woman? No, I'm married to a black woman. <laughs> Why, did, are, are black women supposed to be more angry than white women or something? Well, they got some serious problems. No, I, no, I don't think so. Like, like, like I said, anger has no gender. Anger is just anger. No, it's anger, an emotion. It's totally feminine. No, anger is not totally feminine. <laughs> and, and all the men, all the angry men working around, oh, walking around like their mama. is proof of that. Right, they're just like their mother. No, they didn't get it from their mother. Yes, it did. No, 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 it didn't, it didn't it, come. It came from them. It's the best kept secret on earth. You're born through the flesh of your mother, so you're of the flesh. Uh, then no, you no, forgive no. your mother, you're born of the spirit, return to your father, then you're of the spirit. Brother Peter said that is complete nonsense. That's okay. complete nonsense. All right. Does APU train women to be preachers? Yes, they do. Is that why? Why not? Would you have a, ever have a preacher woman over you? Sure. You would sit under a woman. Yes. Are you the head of your wife? Yes. You the head of your wife? Yeah, we, I'm the head of her. She's the head of me. Your wife is the head of you too. Yes. You have two because heads. Because Paul, Paul said in Ephesians, "Be mutually submitted to each other." Be, and, and mutually so submitted head, your means wife is that the you? husband is just as much surrendered to the wife as the wife is to the husband. Mm -hmm. It is a partnership, and we are subject to one another. Any man that's, that uh, is under his wife is a beta male. Beta. A what? <laughs> <laughs> a beta male. Any man who is you under know, his wife loves his wife. No, he's a beta. A beta? Uh-huh. Uh, no, no, He's I not know. an Afro. No, you, you, you're thinking of a wolf pack. A, 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 wolves are animals with four legs. Humans are not four-legged animals. You know animals. what beta mean, right? Yeah, alpha and beta. Alpha and beta male, that, those are terms that apply to dogs. Uh-uh, they sound to weak men. No, 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 it's, no, it's, it's just a metaphor that we took from the animal kingdom. So you're kingdom. in agreement with women being preachers? Yes. Do your wife know you would sit under a woman? Y yes, Does I think she, know she knows that? that. Yes. My yes. wife is a preacher too. What the? Uh, yes. I bet she pushed you around like Natty going north, huh? No. Yes, she did. <laughs> Not necessarily. Uh -huh. But, but no, we, do have, we, do have, we do have a partnership in ministry. Is it a, is it a man? I'm sorry? You said it's a woman or a man? Who's, who's a woman or a man? Your wife. My, my wife's a woman. Oh, you said partnership in ministry. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah, men and women can have partnerships, you know, uh, in, in ministry. In ministry, yeah. In ministry, okay. yes. Um, I want to ask, well, I'm sorry to hear that. I know you must be suffering. No. <laughs> no go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, <laughs> uh, you are an expert in African-American religious thought and history, right? You know, I'm trying to be. Let me say I'm trying to be. What now, is that? Huh? What is that? African American religious history. And yeah, yeah. African American religion, religious thoughts and history. What yeah. is that? Well, it, yeah, it's it's a it's a study it's a study of our heritage, our our religious heritage, uh, even even beginning with our current uh, religious uh, stance and dispositions, uh, but but tracing it back through history, we try to discover our roots for the particular understandings of God, Christ, and, and the Bible uh, that we bring in our current religious experience. Is African-American re religious thought different from Caucasian religious thought? Oh, yes, very, very definitely. Yes. In what way? Well, for, for one thing, our, our religious heritage is rooted in the regrettable experience of slavery. You used to be a slave? Yes, we used to be slaves. You were a slave at one time. No, I was not. A, I know I was never. I was. I was born. I was born in the 1950s. So that, so, oh. so slavery was was long gone. Right. By then. But I still experience the legacy of slavery. How? And the in legacy what way? Of discrimination. In what way? I st when I experience barriers that exist simply because of the color of, of my skin. Those barriers are still real and they still exist. So how did you get to a, a APU and do all that, be the dean <clears throat> and do all that if Barry was in your way? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's amazing, isn't it? That's, it's a miracle, that's a miracle. Is it possible because they were not there? At least not from the white folks. That, that who was not there? Barry's were not there. 
himself in your mind is not real. I know the barriers were there. The barriers, are, the barriers are there even now. Even now, even even though I am associate dean and professor of New Testament, uh, there there's still some real barriers that you that you deal with. When will black people know that they are not there anymore? What do white people have to do to say, okay, blacks, we didn't gave we gave y'all everything. Do you want the land? You want the land there, and you'll be done. You know, we'll we'll know that these barriers are no longer there when we finally become fully human. And how are you going to do that by taking in the eyes? But the eyes of what? In the eyes of, of white people. So if white people just say to the black, "Y'all human," would you be satisfied? No, it takes more than that. It takes more than that. What else you want? For one thing, for one thing, it takes it takes getting the knees off of our necks. What do thing. you mean by that? Uh, what I what I what I mean by that is the the end of things like uh, racialized police brutality. When those when those kind of things uh, disappear, when when a when a young woman uh, can be sitting in her house and not worry about police officers who, busting the door down who that? and and shooting her to death. Who are you referring to? Breonna Taylor. Oh, that Taylor gun. Uh, did or, you know she was or, dealing with drug Floyd. dealers? And, it, do, it doesn't matter what people you say know she, was she was It doesn't matter, it doesn't what, matter. She, you know, what she was dealing with. It doesn't matter nobody, if she nobody, rented a car nobody, where a murder or Nobody is going to walk into the house of a white woman and shoot her dead. They didn't do that. They didn't do what? They knocked before they went in. The boyfriend or maybe even her shot at the cops. No, they didn't just walk in. No, they busted the door down. No, but they didn't they, just walk in. It was a knock and they, then they went They in. did not identify themselves as police that's officers. The young, the young man thought no, that some true. other group was breaking in. He shot in self-defense. The they returned fire when you and they the killed man. an innocent woman. When you say the young man, are you referring to the drug dealer that you were with? No, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm referring to a boyfriend. I don't, know, I don't know anything about his background. All I, all I know is, is that there's no justification for the string of killings of black men and black women for even, no reason. Even, except if they, they even, if, even if they're drug dealers, pushing drugs, criminals, and all that, well, they don't bring well, it up on okay, themselves. Okay. Our, as our, a our, preacher, as a preacher, hold on. Do they bring up on themselves by the way they live? Well, white people seem to escape that's that. That's not what I'm asking you. you know, and they, Do they and, bring and there, that there up are, on there themselves? There are white drug dealers. There are white gang members. Do they but bring yet you don't hear of killing after killing after killing of unarmed, unarmed that, black men and black women. That's not true. It is true. No, it just I mean, that's, I mean that, that is the problem. That is what all the protests but are ask, about. The protests ask. are not about... Police engagement with criminals. As a preacher, protests, I gotta ask you this. Okay. As a preacher, called by God, sitting in the room, read the read the word when God called you. As a preacher, does it matter their lifestyle? Can they possibly bring this upon themselves by the way they live? Lifestyle does not bring murder upon someone. If you're a drug dealer or you're involved in drug dealing and you're doing criminal things, can you bring that upon yourself? A, a, a lifestyle can lead to consequences. So is it possible to tell a woman and whoever, Floyd or whatever his name was, brought that upon themselves based on their lifestyle? Is that possible? No, not, not under, these circ under these circumstances. It was racism that brought that, 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 that consequence upon her. Do you, believe racism. That, do you believe that white people discriminate against blacks? Yes. Do you discriminate? No. You never discriminate? No. You don't discriminate. I don't, I don't discriminate against anyone on the basis of race. Do you discriminate? I have been discriminated against on the basis of race. So you do discriminate? Everybody discriminates. How about for, you? For, for example, How about you? I prefer to eat chicken rather than pork. That's discrimination. Do you discriminate? Not on the basis of race. Do you discriminate uh, against other people? Not, no, not, so on, the you not, on, you not on the basis of racial characteristics. That's, that's what we're talking about. So why about. did you marry a black woman instead of a white woman? Because I fell in love with her. But why do you fall in love with a white woman? You discriminated. No, I fell yeah, in love. I fell in love you, with my wife. You dated a white woman before, right? No, I never dated a white why woman. Why not? Uh, I that that situation just never arose. Because you discriminated. I fell in love with somebody else. Is being a white Christian different from being a black Christian? Yes. In what way? Heritage. What? Heritage and experience. And what do you mean by that? Black, black people, even black Christians, 
have experienced a racial heritage and history in this country that white people have not experienced. In fact, white people have been responsible for black well, people that have experiencing to be, this history and heritage. What does that have to do with being born of God? It has nothing to, be to do with being born of God, because black people who are Christians are born of God also. But yet, despite the fact that they were Christian and born of God, they have been treated as subhumans. I agree with you that the, er the Arab did treat them that way because it's the black that sold the Arab. No, I, the, no, it was I'm, the black I'm, I'm that talking, sold the Arab. I'm talking about racial history in I, the Americas. It was the black that sold the Arab. I mean, it was the black that sold other blacks to the Arabs over in Africa, Mummy Africa. Uh, and uh, then they went and, and the Arabs sold the blacks around the world. I do agree with that. So they were treated cruelly for that reason. Now you're, 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 blaming, you're blaming the victim. The, le the legacy... How the Arabs the, the victim? The legacy... Who were the victims? Um, the Arabs that, sold, that bought them or the black no, that no, sold chattel, them? Chattel slavery and the middle passage are the responsibility of European and European Americans. What the... There were black people who owned slaves here in this country. No, there were no, no, yes, no, there no, were. no, no black people that not, not own slaves. Now, now so they, you're really saying that a white Christian is different than a black Christian. Yes, I mean, Christianity does not occur in a cultural vacuum. All, all Christian expressions are cultural expressions of Christianity. There's no such thing as, as, as an absolute value neutral, culturally neutral Christianity. That, that, that is a myth. Uh, if, if, you find a cult, if you find a culturally neutral Christianity, that's just white Christianity pretending to be culturally neutral. Where all Christianity you get this is some type from? Huh? Where you get all, the, all Christianity is what? All Christianity is some type of cultural expression. Where do you get all this from? It's history. <laughs> it's history. It's study. You, know, you just read. Do you love white people? I lo yes, I do. You love white people? I love elf people. Oh, that's, what? That's, what, that's what God teaches us to do. do you, you love shall, white people? You shall love, you shall love everybody. How we, about white? we do not have the luxury of hating anybody. That's true. Do you love Martin white Luther people? King Jr. taught that. Do you Martin love Luther white? King Jr. Hey, said, hey, I will not be... Because of time, do you love white people? Yes, I just okay. answered that question. Do you want your students to see themselves as black first or as a Christian first? There is no distinction. How do, you, how do you make that kind of dis distinct? They have to see themselves as who they are. And if, if they are Christians, they're Christian. If, if they're black, their Christian identity is tied up in their black identity. Their black identity is tied up in their Christian identity. There is no separation of that. There is no neutral Christianity. So do you want them to see themselves as black first or Christian first? I want them to see themselves as human first see themselves as human first, who happen to be black and Christian. So Christian third? No, it's all together. It's like, it's like Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Who's first? Father, Son, or Holy Ghost? No, those three are one. Amazing. You, you also teach uh, on the Bible. You said it's necessary to read the Bible to be a true Christian. Yes. How is that true? The Bible, the Bible is the seedbed of our Christian identity. The so, Bible is what, what creates the framework for our understanding as Christians. So it's the Bible. What's the purpose of the Bible? The Bible is the Word of God. So the Bible is the Word of God and not the Word from God? It's both. So is it the Word of God or the it's Word from it's God? Both. It's both. See, How it, can it, it be it's both? Not, it's not an either or. It's the, the Bible is of God because it originates with God. Uh, but it's also the, the word from God because he sends it to human instruments. It's also the word about God. No, the word of God is in you. The Bible is the word from God. Men were inspired from God to write the Bible. So the Bible, and they pointed back to the word of God inside of you, the word made flesh. That's a, that's a very rigid distinction, and it breaks down. <laughs> it breaks down uh, in practice. Uh, the, word, the word of God has its source in God, uh, true, but it's also about God and it's from God at the same time. So, do, so I mean, I mean as, as, as human beings, I mean, we, we do have this desire to make these hard and fast distinctions, but they all tend to break down. I got to ask a fast practice. question because of time. Yes, sir. Do you, um, does your wife obey you? Yes and no. <laughs> 
What do you mean by that? She, she, she obeys me when I ask her to do something, and she, and she does it. But if she thinks I'm asking her to do something that's wrong, she will say, that's not, that's not right. And I don't blame her for doing that, because my wife has a mind of her own, and I support that. But and, and, I, and I have enough sense to know that I am not right all the time. Amazing. What is a man? A man is, is the male of the human species. <laughs> and what is love? Love is thoroughgoing care, compassion, and concern Amazing. for another human being. Are you a Democrat? Uh, yes. So why are you a Democrat? As a Christian, how can you be a Democrat? Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Democrat primarily because I am opposed to the ideas of racism and xenophobia, which I think has taken over the Republican Party now. Amazing. So the Democratic Party <laughs> is about same-sex marriage, abortion. They took Christ, they put God out of their, out of their platform. They don't want to pledge allegiance to him at all, pray to him. They are about abortion. They are about everything that goes against God. They're against everything that goes. How can you support that? Yeah, but xenophobia and racism also goes against God. So, so, so we're we're in the position. We're Tell in the me position. how you support that. We're in, well, I have to support. We're in a position what, what where we have to make. You have to support. Where, I don't support that. We have to make a choice between the so-called lesser of two evils here. What's happening in this country is that the country has been divided into extremisms. There's left extremism. There's right extremism. There's nothing. There's nothing in the middle. So that's the dilemma that we're having to deal with as Christians uh, today in the, in the political parties but that exist. But you're supporting evil. There's nothing. You're supporting evil by supporting the Democratic Party, all in the name of Jesus. And if you vote Republican, you're supporting evil. All. How any, any, way, any way you vote, that's not true about it can be taken Party. as a support of evil. Do you love the great white hope? What is that? Is that a, is that a boxer? <laughs> The president, <laughs> Donald Trump. I have, to, I have to love him as, as a human being. Do you love him? Yeah, I love him. I Form love him with agape love. Four more, lo I four love more years, right? No, no I, I, I hope he loses. Really? Yes. Uh, that woman, Camilla Harris, is an evil, empty shell. How can you support her? But how, well, how, can, you, how can you not support Amazing. her in light of what, of, what the, of what the alternative is? She's, she's evil, and I'm not of evil. I got to put you on the hot seat. Uh-huh. As if you haven't done all that already. <laughs> okay. I see you sweating. But no, it's a light. You got to answer. I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible, all right? All right. All right. The Hot Seat. Is CNN fake news? Uh, no. Should illegal aliens get free health care? Yes. Do you love the great white hope? No. <laughs> Who has more privilege in America, black people or gay people? No, white people have the privilege. The white well, people have the privilege. And, and, who you know, has more privilege in America, black people or gay people? And no, neither, neither one, neither one. Should the LGBTQ agenda be taught in schools? No. Is it possible for black people to be racist toward white people? No. Uh, is Black Lives Matter a peaceful organization? Yes. Uh, is Antifa a peaceful organization? Uh, Antifa is not an organization at all. <laughs> is it a peaceful organization? It's, is not, it's not an organization at all. So what the, is so, it? So it's, it's, it's simply a movement. Amazing. It's simply a movement. It, ha it does not have an address. It does not have a hierarchy. It's just, it's just a movement. Is the Proud Boys a peaceful organization? No. They're, they're white racists. But not Antifa? Is Antifa white racist too? No, Antifa is just a movement. It's, and, and actually, is it actually, white racist? And, and actually, Antifa has not been as active as uh, President Donald Trump has tried to, to, uh, tried to uh, make claim. What? Uh, and during, you haven't seen Antifa during, burning during, and destroying? During, and the pro, uh, during the protest where you had all the burning, the vandalism. That's not a protest. Those, that those was were, a terrorist those, attack. Those were white supremacist groups. Uh, pretending uh, to be Antifa and passing themselves off as Antifa, only to feed, only to feed this conspiracy theory. Do you smoke theory. pot? 
<laughs> no, I just no, I don't smoke pot. I don't, and I and I don't and I don't agree. You sound like you smoke pot. I don't agree that marijuana should be legalized either. <laughs> you might, you should legalize it, <laughs> because if you don't smoke it, maybe you should. So, um, <laughs> you a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with you. True or false? Black lives matter. Yes. Yes, black lives matter. Yes. Amazing. Yes. So you support this organization, Black Lives Matter? Black Lives Matter is not an organization either. It's, 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 I had them on the show. They were founded by some black women. Yeah. Do you support them? No, I, I support the idea of Black Lives Matter. But do you, put, do you support the organization Black Lives Matter? But the, it's not an organization. It is. I had them on the show. I had the president well, I mean, of they, it. I mean, they were, they were representatives of the movement. No, but, it's but, an organization. Okay. Do you support them? Uh, no. You don't? No. You, you don't you support, support the organization Black Lives Matter? I, you mean support them financially? I have nev I've never sent no, in a donation. No, not financially. Donation. Do but I, but I, su I, su I support Black, Black Lives Matter... I mean, we, we, we cannot miss the central point. Real fast, black we point, out of okay. do you they, they are opposed to the killing you, of black people. Do you the support killing of the, unarmed black I support that. Do you support su the organization Black Lives Matter? No, I, support their, I support what they stand for. I support the idea of opposition to the killing of black men and black women. So, real fast, do you support the organization Black Lives Matter? I cannot, I cannot answer that because Why the organization not? does not exist. It is. It's, I, a, it's a movement. It's it, a movement. No, it's an organization founded by black women. But they, ha they have, again, they have no address. There's no hierarchy. Oh, they have it's an just, address. It's just a movement. It's just a movement. So did you know it was founded by a bunch of fat black <laughs> radical lesbians <laughs> I'm not, who, 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 I'm not. I'm not concerned about that. I'm, they, cons I'm concerned. But you hear me, you a preacher. I'm, I'm concerned that the Black Lives Movement rose because George Floyd was killed no. by an officer they pressing his neck that. They with were his knee up on the back. I know. Yeah, they were they around, were around they were, when the fallen Messiah was no, in office. No, they were around in Remember response they were chanting, to the killing of Trayvon want, Martin. Dead cops, they, what do we want it now? Black Lives Matter rose because of the death of Trayvon Martin. And you support Black Lives Matter? I support the idea that black people should not be indiscriminately killed. you support the fat black killed. radical lesbian that found it? I support the idea of Black Lives Matter because they are opposed to the killing of unarmed black men and women. All in the name of Jesus, but they won't go to Chicago or do anything about black on black crime and the parents are crying for help we don't have they to... won't go over there but let me do this thank you for taking the hot seat sure and thank you for coming is there anything you want to promote your website or anything uh, uh no i'm not here to promote uh, anything i'm, okay. I'm you know i just uh, enjoyed the conversation did you have fun i did thank you for coming all right well, thank you for the invitation and thank you all for tuning in i absolutely appreciate it <laughs> don't forget to like follow share sunny Ring the bell, check out the merch, and your Patreon. Check it out there. Click on that little thing there. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Next time on The Fallen State. This is why I won't play the Christianity game with you. When you tell me Christianity has no color, and then you come back with, do you love white people? How do you walk our children down the street and say, look at this great white hope? Oh, you talk about us? You better speak with respect. And for all your listeners that's listening, please put one up for our brother tonight. We got one that's so lost that he's willing to throw his people under the bus. Would you prefer a beta male or an alpha male? I need the king silverback beating his chest <laughs> and make me say, okay, here I come, great babe. Is this the point where Ashton Kutcher gonna jump out and say I'm being punk, <laughs> fooling with you? for watching The Fallen State. We need your continued support. Donate to my nonprofit here. Subscribe and like the videos here. And tell everybody and their mama about the show.
got some stuff there, man. <laughs> that was fun, though, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Up there support fat black radical lesbian life. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this stuff there. And you seem like a nice guy. <laughs>